Everyone in America has heard the rhyme, red touches black, kill a fellow. Red touching yellow is safe for Jack. Wait a minute. I might have said that in a dyslexic way. Anyway, it's it's something like this. Red touches yellow, kill a fellow. Red touches black, safe for Jack. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. There's different variations and I'm sure someone's going to put it down in the comments so you can, you can go down there and read all of them or type it in yourself. Kind of off topic, but you know what else doesn't work for dyslexic people? Righty tighty lefty loosey. Wow, that's a hard one. You know what I have to do every time I'm trying to figure that out? I have to throw an imaginary baseball and then I get it. Anyway, moving back onto the coral snake. Even people that live out of their range know the rhyme. I think it's stuck up there in the American psyche. It's a good rhyme for distinguishing the snake and it works on two species, the eastern coral snake and the Texas coral snake. If you live outside of both those species range, um, it could be a problem, especially in Central and South America. You shouldn't be using it down there. Me personally, I've never actually used it even when I was learning the snake. The overall visual cues of the coral snake was enough. And personally, I kind of hate rhymes. When I was a young lad, I had an experience where I had to identify something that looked like a coral snake. Now back then, and I'm talking about the year 2000 or 2001-ish, it was somewhere around then. It was in the Panhandle of Florida, close to Destin. My parents lived on this nice little piece of property. And for some reason, back then I liked to dig up plants and replant them somewhere else. So I was digging up this wax mortal and I'm digging down deep, probably close to three feet. And I'm wondering why is the taproot this big? This plant wasn't that big. It was probably chest high. But as I'm going down, I see a snake, a colorful snake. I wanted to grab it, but right before I did, I said, hey, I gotta think about this. This could be a coral snake. So I'm looking at it intensely as the snake is kind of moving around in the roots and I'm going, its bands don't wrap around its whole body. Part of its belly is white. And I go, that's a scarlet snake. So naturally I reached down there and started untangling it out of the roots. By the time I got the snake out, I noticed kind of chopped it in half. I felt bad about it. It was the first scarlet snake I ever seen, but but you know when you're digging in the dirt and you're using the shovel, well, you're kind of blind to what you're gonna hit. Anyway, my point was is I didn't use the rhyme. I used key features of the non-venomous snakes that we had in the area, which in Florida is the scarlet snake and the scarlet king snake. In the curl snake, the biggest feature that I knew about is the tip of the nose is black. So let's pull up a picture of the curl snake and let's take a good look at it. Okay, so the first thing I want you to look at is the black head. It's black from its eyes to the tip of the nose. The next thing I want you to look at is in the red bands of the coral snake, there's often little black dots. And you should know on the coral snake's head and tail, there's no red. It alternates from black and yellow. So that's a good one if you can only see part of the snake. The rest of its body alternates from yellow to red to yellow to black. And taking a good look at the coral snake's head, it's nice and round. And on a side note, curl snakes feel the same way they look. They are very soft. Don't touch them though. You don't want to get in trouble. You can't afford that hospital bill. Although they're not likely that they would bite. However, handling one gives you the best chances to get bit, so I don't suggest it. Now let's take a look at the two similar species, the scarlet snake and the scarlet kink. Let's bring the scarlet snake down first and hey, let's add the coral snake right next to it. Do they look that similar? To me, they don't, but that's because I've seen a lot of coral snakes. I've seen a lot of scarlet snakes. Look at the scarlet snake's pointy snout. Also note that it's red and not black. The scarlet snake's bands don't wrap around the whole snake. And you can see they alternate from black to red to black to white. Also note the neck of the scarlet snake in between the first black bands, it's a little orange. Okay, let's get that one out of the way and bring in the scarlet king. Like the coral snake, scarlet kings are gorgeous. But let's look at its head. It's more pointier than the coral snake's head. Let's take a look at the bands. On the Scarlet King snake, the red touches black. On the coral snake, the red touches yellow. So I guess the rhyme does have a place. Again, me personally, I've never used it. Now something to note on the Scarlet snake, when they're babies, the yellow is often white. And unlike the Scarlet snake, the Scarlet King snake's bands go all the way around. If you still want to use the rhyme for the two species of coral snakes, the, the Eastern Coral Snake, also known as the Holoquin, or the Texas Coral Snake, you can, but there is a few exceptions. Sometimes, mostly in Florida, you have some weird looking coral snakes and they don't follow the rhyme. Go ahead and do a quick Google search of aberrant Eastern Coral Snakes and you're going to see some funny looking coral snakes. Also, some coral snakes in South Florida and Key Largo might have reduced yellow bands. Also, just to throw in another American coral snake, the Sonoran, the Sonoran coral snake, not the snoring coral snake, they don't follow the rhyme very well either. So if you live out west in Arizona and parts of New Mexico, you can't really go by the rhyme. You can still go by the black head though. I wish I can put up a photo of one, but I haven't seen one yet, so you're just going to have to look that up. But anyway, that's it.